Hey guys, Tristan Parker here. Now today I'm gonna to run you through step by step how to best get set up with your WordPress website. Now, I know firsthand how much of a minefield WordPress can feel when you first get started with it. So I'm gonna break down the components that you need to know and how to best set up your WordPress website to get the most out of it. Now this is really beneficial if you're a web designer getting started with WordPress or even as a business owner looking to set up your own website. You could kind of refer to this as a crash course in WordPress because I'm gonna be running you through the likes of settings, themes, plugins, pages, navigation, everything that you essentially need to know in order to get started and get the most out of it. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to point out that over 70% of you that are watching my channel have not yet subscribed. So if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe notification and hit the bell as well and you'll be notified of future releases. Now there are also tons of other videos on this channel that are designed to help you up your website design game as well as your business. So super, super beneficial. Now, without further ado, let's jump on the machine and get started. Okay, cool guys, so this is your WordPress dashboard and this is the screen that you are granted with every single time that you log into WordPress. And there isn't really a lot going on here at the moment, but once you start adding plugins to your website, this dashboard starts populating with some more useful data. So I definitely recommend that you visit this screen regularly and see what's going on. So the purpose of today is just to run you through some important and typical steps that you should take every time that you install a new WordPress website. And basically this is gonna teach you how to manage your website and allow you to become better website managers. So the first thing that we are gonna do is take a little look at the navigation on the left-hand side. And this is gonna be how you navigate around your content management system or your WordPress environment. So here we are at the top in dashboards and then following that we've got posts. So this would be where all your blog articles are stored. Then you've got media, which is all of your images, links, pages, which are your website pages. Any comments that you receive on your blog will be within here. Then we've got appearance, plugins, users, tools, and settings. So we're just gonna run through some of the important ones of these and I can talk you through why they're important and how you would go about using them. So the first thing that I wanna show you is how you go about managing your own profile. So if we come up to users, go across to the right and then hit profile. Now from here, it's all of your important information, such as your first name, last name, nickname, so currently that is admin, but you could just put your name in there and you can change your display name here. If you do need to change your email address, you would do that here. But every time that you do update your email address, you will need to confirm it, otherwise it won't quite change. And we've got additional fields, you can put in a biography if you like. Um, but the most important thing here is how you go about changing your password. So if you ever need to change your password, just hit that generate password button and it will give you one, which is awesome. You can make one up yourself, but if it's not secure, so if we just put in password, it will tell you whether it's weak and you have to confirm the use of that weak password, which is pretty useful for keeping your website secure. So the next thing I want to show you is head up to the top and you can see that we can change the skin of your environment. So by default it's this gray and dark gray and light gray which is okay but it's, it's a bit bland. You can change that if you like. We've got modern which is a quite new theme that we have here. Blue. Midnight's quite nice um, but actually I'm just going to hit modern. I quite like this one because it's new. So once you've found something that you like and you've filled in all the information, you just head down and click update profile. All right, sweet, so that's updated. Now next, if you do have other people on your team or other people that you need to allow access to your website, you can add them as users. So under the same section, hit all users, and this is gonna display all of the users within your WordPress database. So currently we just have one, and if you do wanna add another, you just head up here and click add new. And you just give them a username, fill out the fields like the email, name and a password now the important bit here is what role you give them so subscriber is the lowest level role that is available and then the top end is administrator so administrator is going to give them access to all of the tools on the website now if it's just someone that you need to edit content then editor is a pretty legit role to give somebody but yes if you do want this user to have full control of the website you would need to give them administrator access and then once you're done hit that add new user button and it's gonna add it to the list. All right, next we're gonna be talking about permalinks. So if we head over to settings 
and we want to scroll down and go to permalinks. Now, if you're not sure what permalinks are, basically it is a custom URL structure for your website. So this is the anything that appears after the forward slash after your domain name. Now, this is really important because it's important for SEO and readability. So for example, by default, we have this plain setting here and you can see an example of what the URL is. It gives you a, a P and it gives you a number, like that number is random and nobody's gonna know what that page is in relation to. You've got another option of day and name. Now it gives you a date and the post name, which does give you a little bit more context, a little bit more information to the page, but still on an SEO basis, it's not very good. So the one that I recommend that you use is either post name or we can use a custom structure. Now, if you are using a custom structure, what I would do is click category and then post name. So what this is gonna do is, let's say for example, you have an online store and you have sneakers or trainers and then you have a Nike trainer. So what this is gonna do is gonna be your URL forward slash sneakers forward slash Nike sneaker, you know. So it immediately shows you where you're at in terms of the URL. It's gonna allow the search engines to read it and rank it a lot better and it's just a lot tidier. So I recommend going with custom structure, category, and then post name. Once we're done here, we just head down to the bottom and click save changes. All right, cool. Next, we are going to be discussing plugins. So if we, on our left-hand menu, head up to plugins and just click it. Now here we have a list of plugins that are currently installed onto our website. Now these are here by default, so I wouldn't worry too much about them. If you do want to delete any, you have to make sure that they are deactivated, like this one, and then you hit delete. This blue line and the blue tint on this indicates that it is an active plugin. So we don't have the option to delete it. So we'd have to deactivate it, then delete it. So if you're not sure what plugins are, they are extended functionality to your WordPress website. So the best way to think about this is, let's take your smartphone for example. Out of the box, your smartphone does uh, quite a few things like it can send text messages, you can make calls on it, but it doesn't really have any games or social media apps. So what plugins do is it allows you to essentially download apps to your website like you do to your phone and extend the capabilities of it. So if you want to add a new plugin, let's just head up to add new. And here are, are some of the feature plugins, but what I want to do is if we just hit popular, and I can show you just to give you an idea of what type of plugins are available and what essentially they are used for. So the most popular one here is Contact Form 7. And now what this does is it extends the typical contact form abilities of your WordPress website and allows you to simply add a contact form. Then we've got Yoast SEO. So this is adding search engine optimization functionality to your website. And then we've got other things like Elementor, which is a page builder, which I massively, massively believe in and I recommend that you use for all of your websites. And if you are interested in learning how to build websites with Elementor, then check out the other videos on my channel and check the description. And then finally, another one that's really useful is WooCommerce. So if you are looking to sell products on your website and build an e-commerce website, then WooCommerce is gonna be a super cool plugin for you. So here you have a pretty good idea of plugins. All you need to do is click Install Now and once it's installed, you'll have the option to activate it. So you can just hit that activate button. And there we go. You can see that this new plugin is now installed and activated on our WordPress website. And it's that easy. If you want to add more, you just follow the same process and click add new, find the plugin, install it, and then activate it. And trust me guys, you're going to become very, very familiar with plugins. I can guarantee it. Right, next up, I want to talk to you quickly about themes. Now, the best way to do this is if I show you visually what our website currently looks like. And the best way to do this from your WordPress uh, login environment is to head up to the top where it currently says my blog. Yours will probably say something different because you'll have a website name in there. And I want you to click visit site and I'm gonna right click this and open it in a new tab. Okay, cool. So this is how our website currently looks. I mean, there's not really much to look at. This is the default theme, which is currently installed in our website. Now I'm not really sure what's happened to these icons here, but I guess that's not too important. Main thing is here, this is how our website looks because we are using 
a theme. Now, so what do you do when you want to change this? So if we head back to our WordPress environment, you can get there by clicking my blog and then hitting dashboard. Go cool. from here in our left hand navigation, we're going to scroll all the way down to appearance and then we're going to click themes. So here are the themes that are currently installed on our website. We've got 2020, which is the default WordPress theme, and then you've got 2019, which is the previous year default theme. So this is the one that is currently active. If we do want to activate another one, we just hover over it in our library and then click activate. But what I recommend you do is find a new theme that works for you. Now to do that, we're just going to head up to this button and click add new. And here we are. So here we have some of the feature themes that WordPress recommends. What I recommend you do is head up to popular. And then here we are, we have a load of themes that are available to you for completely free. So you can click and install any of these. Now these themes are okay, but what I definitely recommend you do is produce your own theme. And there are other tutorials on my channel that show you how to build a theme step by step using WordPress and Elementor. So again, there's a link down in the description. I'll probably pop a card up at the top and you can check that out. So here we have themes and just remember, themes are the visual representation of how your website looks. So they're super, super important. Okay, cool. So we've covered how the website looks, but we don't have any pages. So let's fix that now. So again, on the left hand navigation, we're gonna scroll up and head to pages. Now at the moment we don't have any pages on our website, which is absolutely fine. So let's add some right now. Click add new right at the top. So you'll notice that this is a very similar action depending on what you're adding. Okay, cool. So from here, we need to give the page a name. So let's call this one homepage. Great. And you would place your content under here if you were using the WordPress editor. I do recommend that you use Elementor as your page builder. And if you're interested in that, there are other tutorials on my channel to run you through that. So there'll be a link in the description. But for now, I'm gonna give it a name of homepage and we're gonna head up to the top right and we're gonna click publish. Cool, now we can either view the page or we're gonna go back and we're gonna add some more pages to the website. So head up to the top left and click this WordPress icon. Great, and we're gonna repeat this step to create another page. All right, and let's just call this one contact us for simplicity so if you're not ready to publish any of your pages there is the option to save it as a draft here but for now i'm just going to publish that head back to our pages navigation so you can see that that is really quite straightforward we've got our pages displaying here for our website now what i want to show you is how you go about linking to these pages from your website's navigation so from here we want to head back over to the left hand side go to appearance and then we're going to hover down and go to menus cool so this would be where we create our wordpress website navigation otherwise known as menus so this box here we're just going to put a name of a menu in let's go with main menu that is a very common one for me so if we're working with a primary website navigation i tend to call it main menu once you've given it a name hit create menu and what you'll see here on the left hand side is a collection of menu items that we can add to our navigation. So at the top we've got pages and you'll see here that here are the two new pages that we've just created. So if we check those and then click add to menu, it's going to add it to our menu here. Uh, alternatively, if you had any blog posts, you can add those. If you have a custom link, so if you wanted to link out to an external website, you can do that here as well. And you just put in the information and add it to menu. Once your navigation is added, you have the option to reorder them, which is awesome because once you reorder it this side, it's gonna then reflect on the front end of the website as well. Uh, alternatively, if you wanted to create a nice drop-down navigation, you can do that here as well by uh, clicking an item and dragging it into the right, like so. Once you're happy with the order, you need to create a display setting and depending on the type of theme that you're using will depend on what display locations you have but primarily you want to add it in the desktop horizontal menu or the header menu um, anywhere anywhere that's going to signify it being the main menu at the top of the page and once we're done there we're just going to click save menu cool so that's really quite straightforward we've just created a navigation now finally let's just go and see how this is looking Cool, so you'll see here, again, not very much to look at here, but you'll see the navigation items that we've created and just assigned to the website are appearing here, which is fantastic because now we can link to them. So 
essentially guys that's how you go about setting up your WordPress website I've run you through all of the steps that you need to follow in order to have the best possible setup for your site I've run through how to create pages how you go about adding themes plugins all of that stuff so hopefully you can create a very good setup for your websites going forward so there you have it guys hopefully you have found that valuable and hopefully you're on your way to creating your own wordpress website now if you want some help with creating a website step by step from scratch then there are videos on my channel that allow you to do that so go and check those out also if you haven't done so already hit the subscribe button and the bell notification and you're going to be notified of future releases and there are tons of other videos on this channel that are designed to help you up your website design game as well as your business. So absolutely go and check those out. But that's it for now, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.